Tack weld your piece in the corners. One of the trickiest parts of welding square tubing is how to tie into the other welds. You have to completely reposition yourself to get to the other side. Tacking in the corners allows you to tie into each side without having to reposition. Secondly, all of those that don't have a nice fixture table, me included, the tack will hold your part in place without having to clamp it down in every direction. They don't add that much heat. So think about it, you're welding, you're getting this material up to a melting point. So if you did a big old fillet weld along this backside, by the time you let it solidify or cool down, this whole piece would be pulled in that direction and your angles would be all skewed off. Well, I mean, hey, if you're doing some lawn art, have at it, it doesn't matter. Add one by holding the pieces in the desired setup and pull the trigger for just a half of a second, right in the middle of both pieces. Simple as that. Even though it is tacked up, you'll still want to weld the joints that distort the least, and that would be the butt welds and corner welds. Fill the welds pull the most, so leave those for last. Last thing to check before you pull the trigger is your settings. Hopefully you've actually set that by now. I started off with the suggested settings. They ended up being pretty cold. I continued to turn it up until I got a nice bead consistency. And on the flip side, if you're burning through, well, you're obviously too hot, so turn those settings down. If you've been flux core welding, you're probably used to pulling or dragging your weld. I know I'm usually flexing with my Titanium 125, but this time it's MIG and you can push or pull. It doesn't matter. Depending on the joint, you'll see me doing both. Moving on to the corner weld. Turn your settings down a notch. And that's because you don't have that much material because your material is coming to a point. And a uh, thing I picked up from uh, Welding Tips and Tricks, thank you Jody, is to actually uh, do a quick pass with a grinder on this. Make a nice flat edge that gives you a nice little edge to be able to weld on. And it gives you a nice bead profile. Moving over to the fill weld, since there is more material there, make sure you turn the settings back up. Now this is where I like to add a little manipulation, either some curly Q's or some cursive C's. It doesn't matter. What you're doing is just trying to tie into both pieces and getting a good weld. If you're just dealing with two mitered pieces, well, those are the only three welds you got to deal with. But let's just face it, there's tons of projects out there where you're just buttoning up two pieces together and having at it. You would think this is just another butt weld, but in reality it's not. The square tubing actually has a radius around it, so when you stick the piece up to it, it creates a little tiny groove in there. So this weld is actually a single groove or single bevel weld. And the trick to this one is you want to direct the weld into the piece that's continuous, not the piece that's butted up ended into it. And that's because there's more material here to absorb that heat. If you just went right down the middle, you'd be burning through the end. So what I like to do is actually angle it towards this piece and then every once in a while, just kind of cross over to the other side and you'll get a good weld that overflows and a good tie-in. That's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.